All right, what you're looking at here is my 1998 Valkyrie, and this is the standard edition. Now, there's a couple other models that have more bells and whistles, but a lot of us like the stripped down look of the standard. And of course, that means we get to customize it any way we want. Well, there's one thing I always missed on this thing, and that's having a few more gauges and indicators. Especially when you're on a long trip, the only way to figure out that you're about to run out of gas is to open up the gas tank and take a look inside. But uh, I came across an engineer from the Netherlands, Joop Angelier, and he has a few projects to add uh, some extras on this bike. One of them is a gas gauge and I'll show you just what I did to get this installed on my bike. So let's see what comes in the box. We've got some installation instructions here. There's lots of pictures which is always good and I see a lot of red writing. Looks like warnings for things that could go wrong if you don't install this right so I'll be reading that pretty carefully before I get started. All right, we got a bag of hardware here and um, some hose clamps, some cable ties are in there, a uh, little tiny screwdriver even, and the Velcro pad that will attach the sending unit to the bike. So this obviously is our electrical wiring. Um, so going to connect to the sending unit. Uh, the back end is going to connect to our power, our ignition circuit, and the front end to the fuel gauge. Now this, this is the meat of the whole uh, system. I'm going to call it the sending unit and I know that uh, it has input for fuel there and that will detect the pressure depending on how much gas is in the tank. Uh, that is converted to an electrical signal so uh, the more pressure it detects the stronger the signal is I'm sure it sends that to a um, stepper motor in the fuel gauge which moves the dial and shows me how much gas I have all right next here is the actual fuel gauge so it's an analog fuel gauge but it takes this input from an electrical signal and as I said uh, hold on let's get this in focus okay so um, the greater the pressure that's detected the stronger the electrical signal and the further it pushes that dial uh, with the stepper motor and uh, this piece has got to be pretty important. So I'm going to have to cut my existing fuel line. I'll chop off a nice hunk of that and I'll install this right in the middle between my gas tank and my carburetors. And that's what sends the fuel down to the sending unit. Now I've got some plans for how I'm going to mount not only this, but all the instruments on my bike. And I'm not ready to talk about that just yet. So for now, I'm going to use this hardware to attach it to my handlebar. And uh, well, it came with a little Allen wrench. That's convenient. All right, so looks like that's all the parts. I'm going to grab some tools and get those together and head on out to the bike. So I'll be right back with all of that. If there's one thing I learned to hate, it's not planning ahead and your short job turns into a long project because you're running back and forth, grabbing things that you should have planned ahead for. So with that in mind, I know I'm going to have to deal with my fuel line. I'm going to have to cut about three, four inches off of the existing line and uh, insert this T-junction in there. And so, I'm going to take out my electrician's scissors. 
you can see they're designed to have lots of leverage and plus they're pretty much razor sharp so uh, if this won't do the job I don't know what will now uh, back to this T-junction I know I'm gonna have I'd say what, four or six um, hose clamps so um, yeah there's another section here that's gonna go down to my sending unit and uh, with that in mind I'm gonna take uh, screwdrivers I've got um, Phillips head, flathead, and I've got uh, a ratchet set that um, has from 6 to 14 millimeter sockets, and that should be plenty. Um, in order to take my gas tank off, I've got some hex bolts, so I've got American and metric Allen wrenches. So let's get back to this uh, fuel line. I've got some long forceps here, uh, long enough to give me leverage and skinny enough to fit into that little narrow space. So I'll be able to pull off my uh, fuel line, make all my modifications, uh, stick it back on without having to take my bike completely apart to get it done. And last but not least, um, I have quite a bit of electronics already added to this bike, so I may have to get creative. I've got some rosin core solder and a low wattage soldering iron in case I have to tap into my existing circuits. I'll be all set. So this wall is where I'm going to attach my sending unit. And then uh, you come up under here and this is the fuel pack cock that connects to my gas tank. And you can see there that's the end of the fuel line that goes to my carburetors. So uh, I'll be cutting a length of that off and attaching my T-bracket right there. So my next step is to remove the gas tank. As you can see, there's one bolt here in the rear. And uh, I always like to make sure my bolts are kept in the same exact spot so I don't lose them. And um, this tank's ready to come off. Just loosen it up and I'll show you here in the front where the, um, where the front hex bolt is, is connected right there. So that fuel tank is gone. I've chopped off a few inches from my fuel line there and installed this T-junction along with the hose that will connect to my gas tank. So what's the next step? I'll put the gas tank back on, get it bolted down. I'll attach the fuel line uh, to my fuel pack cock and I'll attach this air hose. What that does is allows air into the gas tank as the fuel level goes down so you don't create a vacuum just like science glass. So real quick here I just want to show where I'm gonna run my electrical wiring right next to my air cleaner box under the gas tank and out front here next to the handlebars. So let's talk about that connection from my T-junction I installed on the gas line down to my sending unit. So in a second here, I'm going to turn the bike on. I'll let gas pour out of this hose down into a bucket I have ready to go. And the reason for that is to get all the air out of the line. Now, why is that important? Well, uh, back to science class, air is more compressible than liquid gasoline. So that means that the pressure created inside that hose would constantly be changing. Worst case scenario, it could get so high that it would ruin the sensor inside my sending unit. Um, otherwise, the pressure, I could never count on the reading off my gas gauge anyway because the pressure would constantly be changing as that air bubble uh, sort of expanded and contracted. 
So I'll get that all connected and I'll be right back. The last thing I had to do was supply power to that device and on the Honda Valkyrie, on the right hand side, if you take off this panel, you'll find your auxiliary power connector. Now to tap into that circuit, I had to do a little soldering, but uh, with that, I'm ready to go. Let's get this thing turned on. So everything's installed here and let's talk about calibrating this. I had to remove a little plastic plug here and inside there is a potentiometer. So I notice you turn to the left and it goes solid green. You turn it to the right and it goes red. So getting it right where you need to be, your light will blink on and off like this. And um, I've already done that. And it looks like I'm in the sweet spot. So let's take a look at the gauge for the very first time. All right, this has been a pretty fun project and I'm real happy with the way it turned out because I did go fill up earlier today and that's just about how much gas I have. So this thing's pretty damn accurate. Um, that's not where I'm gonna mount it permanently, but um, I think I'll save that for another video. A big thanks goes out to Joop Angelier from the Netherlands. He's a maker who designs all of these cool gadgets for his own bike. He was cool enough to hand build this and send it to me from halfway around the world. Uh, check out his website. Lots of great schematics and projects and he does this type of thing for fun, which makes him a serious badass in my book. All right, thanks for watching and keep your eye open for more projects. There's definitely more videos to come.